Greetings, fellow humans and other beings of this, uh, well, world, space, etc., and all the other things. Greetings, all of you. I would like to uh, demonstrate my accomplishments with this device. This is uh, the Kindle Paper White 2 uh, called sometimes version 5 if I remember correctly it's in the airplane mode right now because I'm trying to protect my Kindle from any uh, well firmware updates because it took me a lot of effort not a lot of effort but a lot of googling and time to get this to this state with the newest firmware 5.6.5 uh, yes uh, there has been some waiting and then I found out an alternative way so it was interesting progress but anyway what I ended up with is this uh, Kindle launcher it's a unified thing it's common system that developers use to uh, execute their apps. So one of the apps that I found online was uh, Keyterm, which is a terminal emulator, simple terminal emulator like that. Uh, you can see who am I, and you can see that I am root, and that is a good thing. And I have, because this is a full Linux and I have root access, this computer is at this point Turing complete. It is a fully functional Linux machine and you can do more or less whatever you want. There are some restrictions but, but, but you are root and this is a ARM computer running Linux so the world is yours uh, well anyway uh, what I've got running here not running but available here this is my attempt at a Linux running on top of another Linux and let me explain what it means uh, where you start, uh, let me show you. Uh, with the mount, yes, let, let's, oh, well, let's go. The thing that starts is xephir.sh or xeph.sh. Uh, that, that goes from menu.json. You, you saw there were some entries and one of the, one of the was R when I started QR. So, so one of them was arch, and this was through this menu.json menu .json referencing this file in here. And this file in here, all it does, do I have midnight commander? I probably don't. I have it inside of arch though. So, so where I when I have xf.sh, uh, it just starts arch.sh with a parameter start xephir.sh inside is just shorthand so that yes uh, arch.sh is of interest so sh this is the arch.sh there and you can see that, that at first I just uh, create the mount I should also show you so that's also an interesting thing the mount is actually kinda interesting because you can see I took I put quite some effort into it and I should probably make the screen a bit more and then make sure that and make sure that you can read it like that, yes. Oh uh, well. Uh, you can see that I'm creating some nodes in here. Uh, some... 
you see uh, is here the the dev loop arg and and stuff and then I'm mounting it uh, and I'm mounting file into that loop somewhere yeah that, that's this line here mount o loop dev loop arg that's just oh sorry uh, dev loop arg that just means uh, that this is the location of the loop file these are parameters and then what file and it's split across two lines because I had small small terminal window. So yeah and arg OS uh that's arch image. Oh there's some interesting syntax. Syn interesting syntax. Not sure uh, well well, I put something together and, and it appears to be working. I probably just copy and pasted it from Stack Overflow or something. Anyway, it appears to be working and it mounts this image into this folder so that this image is formatted. I mean, it's a file. It really is a file, but in Unix and Linux everything is a file. So, so we just say that this, this file that you can move around conveniently in your I can even have backup of this on my computer that can even run Windows because it's just a file.img it's not a file system that stuff I mean it's difficult to carry around the file system this is just a simple file and everything that's happening is inside of that mounted on that folder OS so when you actually do that uh, we actually want to mount the stuff dot sh and then the second one was just aux but auxiliary no such oh well I guess that's just did I hmm R get mount I see the first line here is a remove that's just to make sure that whatever if something was terminated uh, incorrectly then it then clear up the mess I mean if it you know right so before the camera has cut off uh, I was trying to demonstrate the graphics user interface so let's just start QL QL whatever that is and let's start the arg, the script I was trying to show you, the one that mounts the the image into file and then start and then roots into it and changes root into the directory and and start Xephyr, which is a program which is like a windowed uh, X client, you could say. So you have a X client. This is here. That's, that's the main display. That's an X client. It's it, it has this thing. By the way, this is a plugin for the awesome VM for the awesome window manager. The WM, the window manager. Uh, that's the outer world. When you go back, when you terminate this thing, uh, when that happens, that that's the that's the outer Linux. But this Arch Linux here, I installed into the file and change root into that file so this is like a little partition running in a window on the same CPU sharing the same CPU but running from the from the Linux perspective on like, like this thing runs on top of the base Linux that runs beneath that running all the lab 126 things that, that the guys put in it and all the people and the other things so you see it's 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 just uh, running on top of it but it's still a fully working linux like oh what have i done i switched to a workplace different work workplace right so you can still move win like windows like that it's a little awkward but i mean this device wasn't really designed to be operated like this, I can imagine. 
Yes, and if I'm careful, I could perhaps extend. No. No. No, I need to be very precise. Oh, well. Something like that, and I can't even get to the very corners. But anyway, like, it's, it's just a normal window. And we have things here. Finder. Development. Do I have some development thing in here? Well, I can design QT. I'm not sure if I want a full QT running on this. It probably wouldn't have enough power. This is... Wow. Oh, well. Look at that. I could install FreeSIF on it, actually. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. I will install FreeSIF. That is a good use of resources. Graphics. I need to install some lightweight drawing program on this. And other things. Internet, I have SSH, VNC, and links. That, oh, that's very lightweight thing. I used to run Midori, I believe, or something like that. That was supposed to be lightweight, but it crashed occasionally the whole system, so I don't know. I really don't know. I actually have, like, full, uh, you know, uh, a table style editor with all the formulas and things, and you can do graphs and stuff. I think you can even open the open, uh, you know, the ODT, the open document for tables or something. I don't remember the extension, but anyway, like you can you can do things. V and C. If I wouldn't be in the airplane mode, I would show, but I'm locked out at this point. System. Hmm. Don't know, numeric. Let's see how that works. Right, so that appears to be a normal program with tables, like there is nothing new in there. File. And let's open a recent. Do we have book one? What is book one? Oh, here are some numbers and some graph, that's convenient. It's probably from some of my engineering things. Hmm. Right. Now this is actually a useful view, like Having this on your Kindle and actually measuring some data, I think. Do we actually measure data or did I just generate them? Oh, this seems to be real data actually. Survivors. Fails. Oh, that looks like some sort of statistics problem or something. I would think. Perhaps, but anyway, I quite like how this works, and and you know you can put normal equations in there, and it would work. That's that's actually a very useful thing to have, in my opinion. Like, why not have it? It's, it's nice. Right, I don't think at this point I can show more than that. I installed some of the book readers. Will they show up? Hmm. These things in there? Oh well, whatever. Uh, I used to know which is which. This is for in for uh, this one is for opening the GPU. This one for obviously PDF, and this one for all the other ebooks like EPUB. Because I don't think that Kindle allows you to read EPUBs by default. So, if you install this program here, you can actually read EPUBs. This is cryptography in C and C++. And I think this is a EPUB book. Oh, where is it? Is it here? Library. Well, anyway, you get the idea.
There we go. Well, that's weirdly specific. Oh well. I think that that yes, like this this appears to be working as as it should work. Yes, this is the actual cryptogra cryptography book. Can perhaps see a little ghosting in there, but that's oh well. So that's pretty much it, and there is Treto to show images and file manager, and obviously, of course, the terminal emulator, which is a very, like a very important thing. You, uh, I mean, you couldn't really do anything without a terminal. And the best thing about this is that again, who am I? Come on. Who am I? And when I press return, I'm root. Well, does it show? Well, it said, said root. Well, that is a root. I could even make it bigger. Well, I mean, it, it it is rather small when you look at it, but... Yes, you can see root written there. So, yes, uh, I also have... In the mounting files... Well, I'll upload them on GitHub anyway, and it's like almost not commented, but... It's quite self-explanatory how this was done. You will see it in the code, in the source code. It's just a few lines. It's not that difficult. Right, so you be good, and I will, you know, the standards. How do you say that? It's the thing like live long and no, man.